Hello again, fellow geeky people. Here we are with the final JSON programming tutorial, which is number seven. In this lesson, you will learn how to create timed JSON data requests using AJAX, query your MySQL database for random items, return the MySQL result set as JSON data, and finally create a cool, useful JSON driven web application. And here's the finished product of what you'll be learning how to create. What I did was set it up for every 10 seconds. It requests four new random items out of your database and it'll repopulate this little data box that you have here on your web page. So every 10 seconds, when the user's scanning your page, they'll see a little box that's just magically popping new data in and out of it randomly from your database in real time without refresh. To keep everything nice and in line, we are going to begin this lesson with the same exact files that we left off with in lesson number 6. If you have not seen all the previous JSON tutorials number 1 through 6, you'll probably have a little bit of difficulty fully understanding what we're about to do in this video lesson. So I'd like you to right click JSON tutorial number 6 HTML and open that in your favorite HTML editor. Now I want you to go to file, open, JSON gallery data dot PHP. These are the two files that we left off with in the last lesson. Now save JSON gallery data dot PHP, save as, instead of JSON gallery data, let's call it JSON underscore MySQL data. Save. And then you can close JSON gallery data dot PHP, because you'll want to save that one just for referencing later on. And JSON tutorial number six dot HTML, you want to save that one as JSON tutorial seven. Save. Then you can close JSON tutorial 6.html. So, what we'll do is begin with JSON MySQL data.php. The first thing I'm going to do is remove everything that we're not going to be using. So, we're going to have a posted variable coming in called limit from our HTML file. It's going to be posted to this script. So, we can just call that limit. And the JSON data variable where it begins, we have to keep that in place for the opening curly brace. The dir variable, that can go away. The dir handle, that can go away. We'll keep the i, and this whole while loop can go away. But you want to keep that line that says JSON data dot equals, where it's compounding different little objects within the JSON data variable. Keep that line, but remove everything else. Remove the while loop and those two closing curly braces there after the JSON data variable. Then you can remove the close dir. We don't need that anymore. And we'll keep that little chop in place just to reference it. Now the first thing you want to do in the script is right under the header, we want to put an if condition statement. And that if condition statement reads if is set posted variable of limit. That's going to be posted from our application to this script. So if and only if it's posted to this script, do we want this script to run. And the first thing we do is clean. We'll filter this posted limit variable. If you're going to use anything in a MySQL query, and if it's a posted variable, a get variable, any kind of variable coming across headers, you want to make sure that you filter all that information. So this preg replace function does that. It uses a regular expression to filter out everything you don't want. So you can see my regular expression is set up to filter everything but numbers. If I wanted to allow spaces, I would put a space there. If I wanted to allow letters, I would put A through Z. If I wanted all uppercase letters too, I would put a little I right here on the end. But since I don't want letters, I can remove that I. I can remove these letters here and remove the space because the limit is just a number. Now for now, don't even worry about this data that's under your if condition because everything that you're going to be putting in this script is going to be inside of this if condition statement. And we'll be grabbing this as we need it to put it up within that if condition. So the very next line within that if condition, after you filter the limit variable that's being posted to this script, you're going to put a require once function, which is going to be referencing your database connection file. Then we can take this i, which was our iterator variable, control x, and we're going to place it right under the require once line. Then we're going to take this JSON data variable we have here, control x, and we're going to put that under the i. So this is where your JSON data variable begins. And this limit, we can remove that since we already have it being cleaned up top here. 
Now these two last lines here at the bottom, control X, we're going to put them up in the if condition as well. Those are the actual last two lines of your script within the if condition. Because you'll be closing that JSON data object with its closing curly brace there. And that's the last thing you do. And then you echo all the JSON data back to JavaScript. Now right here between those two things is where you want to query your database and make a little while loop that's going to pump out many items that you want. So what I'm going to do now is put a very basic MySQL query in place and its resulting while loop. You can see that we have that in place right now and let me explain those lines to you just in case you don't know what's going on here. First thing we do is set up a string. This is just a string variable that is our SQL syntax. That's really the SQL syntax that I'm going to have in my query. It's saying select all from table name and you put your table name there in place of where I have the word table name and then we say order by rand which is rand is a SQL function that will allow you to choose random things out of the database random items and we limit by the limit number and the limit number is going to be posted from our uh, Ajax to this PHP script and that's going to be an integer it could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to a thousand, whatever you want. And I think I'm going to use the number four when I create my script. So this will read select all from whatever table that you want, order by rand limit four. But like I said, this limit is going to be a dynamic variable coming into the script. And the next line, I actually execute the query using the MySQL query function, and I sync in my SQL string right here. And then I just say or die MySQL error, just in case any syntax is wrong or any errors occur my script will die and the MySQL error will be printed onto the screen so my dumb butt can see what I did wrong then you simply use MySQL fetch array which will give you a resulting array in this row variable and you can while loop over that array so you can compound this JSON data variable with a lot of items that come pouring out of your database so like I said this is a pretty standard MySQL query and a very basic MySQL while loop result set. So what we'll do is take this last line that we have here, control X, and we'll put it up in place where it needs to go right here at the last line inside the while loop. So you're compounding all of this data, but we want this to be structured a little bit different. This is structured for our image gallery that we created in the previous lesson. So we just have to make it say different things. We'll say article, since this is going to be uh, grabbing articles. In my case, it can grab any items you want from any database you want. So here I++ makes this I that equals zero in the beginning of the script. I++ makes it increment by one each time the loop passes. So the first pass of the loop, this I is going to be a one. The first pass of the loop, the first little object in the JSON data variable is going to be article one. Second item passes through the loop, it'll be article two article 3 and that is the property for the object so on the right side of our colon where we have to have the value for that property we have a nested object and then after that little nested object we have to make sure that we put a comma so I'm gonna send article and then in the nested object we have three different properties and their values so you have three different key value pairs in there the first one is going to be ID the second one is going to be title of the article. And the third one is going to be creation date. So for short, I'll just make it CD. You can see my CD variable is right here. So let's just change file to the CD variable, which is the creation date coming out of the database. The title, let's make sure we replace that here. And then ID needs to go here. So that'll be the article ID, the article's title, and then the article's creation date. Now, before your last two little lines here, the one that closes up the JSON formatted data and your echo to echo everything back to Ajax, you want to put one more line, which you'll either want to chop this last comma off of the last item that comes through the loop because you can't have a trailing comma on the last object within your JSON formatted data. So you have to actually chop that off. So you can either do this like we did in the last tutorial where we use the chop function in PHP and all that did is take just the very last comma off of the end of the last little 
nested object within the data format. So you can either do that or I'll show you something new in this lesson. We're going to send some arbitrary data back. So along with all of those deeply nested inner article items there, we're going to have some arbitrary data that also gets sent within that data object but will be separate from all of the other little nested objects within there. So in my case I'll have four of these little article one, two, three, four, and their ID, title, and CD. I'll have four sets of those things. And then I'll have one set at the bottom because it's not inside of the while loop. I'll have one set at the bottom with a property of arbitrary. That means arbitrary data. You can name that anything you want and I'll show you how to scoop it up in your JavaScript when this data is returned to Ajax. So within this little nested object. All I did was I put the item count which will be i. So after your while loop runs, however many items came out of that loop, that's what i will represent at the end of the looping process. So if there's 10 items come through the loop, this will return item count 10. And then we'll also return the get date. And I'm just showing you how to send random arbitrary crap data that you might just want to send along with the data request that you can scoop up separately from everything that's within this loop. Okay, so let's take these lines. We don't need them anymore. And I think that is everything. So that is what your completed PHP script should look like. That's JSON MySQL data.php, which the Ajax within our HTML file is going to be calling. And we're going to use time to request this time. Okay, since we're done in this side of things, let's mosey on over to jsontutorial7.html and we're going to change what we need to change in here now. And it's not going to be very much at all. We're going to go quick. Now the first thing is we're not going to have all this crap in here like we had for the photo gallery because the photo gallery needs a little more CSS than we're going to need. We're just going to need this one rule that is div id data box. And then we just set up the data box any way we want. Now scroll down to your HTML and where you have all of these things, just get rid of everything until you got one div there. And we'll save that script line. And this div change to data box. And right before that div data box, we're going to put this H2 heading. And now we're going to change H Ajax JSON gallery to Ajax JSON data function. And we're not going to send any arguments through. You guys already learned how to send dynamic arguments through your functions. So Ajax JSON data is the name of the function that should be here in the JavaScript. So change that to Ajax JSON data and remove the folder argument. Now you can remove the picture frame reference and let's change this to the data box reference. Let's grab the ID of that data box and we're going to put it right here. Var data box get element by ID data box. Then just like before we establish our XML HTTP request object as a variable called HR. Then we run the open method on that object. And the first parameter is post. The second parameter is the script that we want to use, the PHP script that's going to be feeding back our data. And that one is JSON MySQL data. So we change gallery to MySQL. And that is all you have to change there. You go down, you can leave all of that alone. And actually we can scoop up the arbitrary data by, I think we can use arbitrary right here. Let's see if that works. Let's see what we need to grab inside of arbitrary. Here's arbitrary. It's coming back from the PHP. And inside of that object is another nested object with, with two pieces of data in it. Item count and return time. So let's just get the return time. Control C. Go back into your HTML file. So you want data.arbitrary.return time. And we're going to try to put that in a different uh, HTML element. Let's, yeah, I'll put a new element down here in the HTML. So we'll have data box. Right under data box, we're going to have arbitrary. Arbitrary box. So since we're adding that, let's go ahead and make a reference for that right here under data box. Make sure it has the proper ID right there and right there. So when the data comes back through the Ajax request, instead of targeting the picture frame with the data, we're going to target the arbitrary box and its inner HTML property. And what we're going to do is just pop in the value. We don't need all that stuff. We're just going to pop in the value of the return time and that gets generated, you could see here in PHP using the PHP get date function. And remember D stands for data. 
and that's the data object, the JSON data object that comes back. And all of this was fully discussed in the previous lessons. I'm not going to go over things over and over again for people who are not paying attention to the whole series. So if you get lost, it's your own fault. Now, instead of thumbnail box .inner HTML, we want data box right here to always empty each time a new request is being made. And remember, I said we're going to have timed requests. So each time more data is being requested in, we're going to empty the box out. Now this for loop is going to stay just like it is. It's going to have variable object in data. And then each time you want to grab something, all you have to do is put the data object there. And then the object variable goes inside of the square brackets right next to it. And then you can dig inside for title. Remember in our PHP script, we have in the objects coming back, each article has ID, title, and CD which is creation date. So this little if condition just makes sure that it's going to be one of those objects in the PHP and the arbitrary data won't be accessed within this loop because of this if condition saying that it has to have a title property in order for the loop to add it to the inner HTML of data box. So right here make sure this says data box and what we'll do is just throw in a paragraph. Yeah so instead of doing all of that we're going to throw in two paragraphs, one on top of the other. So one for the title and one for the creation date. And I'll show you guys how to format this a little bit smarter after we run our initial test in the in the browser live in the web server. Now down here where you're sending the dynamic folder variable in the last lesson, you can remove that dynamic variable there. And we're going to put the name of this key value pair being sent is limit. That's the variable that we want. And the value is going to be four and you can put any number that you want. If you want 10 random items then you put 10 there. I just want 4. Each time the request happens I want 4 items. Now right after your hr send method you want to make sure this says data box because there is no more thumbnail box remember. Okay now the very last line is right under the data box inner html requesting dot 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 that we put each time the request happens we're going to put a new timer variable here and actually let's initialize this outside above let's put var my timer and then semicolon so that'll initialize that variable there and then we're using it here so the my timer variable is equal to the set timeout method the set timeout method allows you to execute code after a certain amount of time and that time in this case is 10 seconds if you wanted that one second you'd make that 1000 since i want 10 seconds it's 10,000. Those are milliseconds. So each 10 seconds, I'm going to fire off Ajax JSON data function, which is the name of our function here. So basically, this function is now set to loop on itself every 10 seconds, and it'll execute immediately the first time. So after the first time, it executes immediately, then it'll wait 10 seconds. And then 10 seconds after that, 10 seconds after that. And that's how the requests will just roll on. And it will keep getting random data upon each request. So when we run this script with our other script, our PHP script, we're going to have some data come in. And now, just temporarily, we're going to be throwing in two paragraphs. One paragraph is going to hold each title. The next paragraph will hold each creation date. So we should have basically eight paragraphs because I wanted four items. Now, down here... Uh, function picture frame you don't need that at all just get rid of that completely and I think that's it let's give this a test run okay now you want to go to your live web server online and make sure you FTP both the PHP script and your HTML file and you go to your live web server online and I'm going to be tapping into the articles at world of webcraft so you can see my articles came flying in for each time and then every 10 seconds it says requesting very quickly then it brings in four new random articles so you can see the article titles there and the article dates right under them and right here in our script we have title and creation date within paragraph tags so you can see how that's structured exactly and we have an array coming back as our uh, return time so just for testing let's make that say what do we have here item count because this is giving us an array back. So I'm going to show you how to break that down just to get the timestamp. So here instead of return time, let's put item count. 
and we should get 4 back. So re FTP JSON Tutorial 7.html and see the results you get by checking out item count. So if I refresh the page, see it says 4. So I'm successfully getting my arbitrary data back from within this little nested arbitrary data object. And you can see we're also able to loop over the many objects that are deeply nested within that JSON data coming back. So you can target it directly like this or you can loop through things. Now what I'm going to do is make each one put out its own paragraph so we can remove this P tag and this closing P tag. So you have really everything is wrapped in that one P tag, you see? We're going to put the title there and in between this and this we're going to put a link. So we'll just put A, close the A, then go over here to the other side and put the closing part of the A tag. Now in the opening part of the A tag we're going to put href. And that's going to be equal to that article's URL. blog.php put your question mark, your ID URL variable is equal to and this is where you're going to go ahead and copy this title data right there in between the single quotes and pop it in right here after your equal sign. So you're going to have ID equals and here you're going to put in dot ID. Because remember in the PHP we're getting each article's ID and it's being passed through as well. So we can access that to make our little link. So it'll be blog.php and the URL variable will be ID is equal to whatever dynamic ID is being passed through the loop for that article. So the title will now be a clickable blue link. Now after the A tag, let's just put a break tag to put a line break. And then you'll have your date under that. And each one of these items will be paragraph separated, which you can also put them in divs if you want. Press Control S and re FTP JSON Tutorial 7.html up to your server. And remember, you have to be on a live PHP enabled server to see any of this data that PHP is going to render back. So now let's refresh the page. And you see, I now have blue links here. And the only reason some of those are purple is because I've seen those pages within this browser already. So that's why Google Chrome is making those purple. You can see if I have not visited that article yet and read it, the, the uh, link is blue by default. So now I'm going to try and click on one of these and see if it takes me to the article, which it does. So what you're doing is every 10 seconds, you're pulling four random items out from your database and you're making sure that it's JSON encoded data that's being sent back to your application. Okay, so let's go back into JSON MySQL data.php script and right here before we send our arbitrary data through the JSON data variable, we're going to get a proper timestamp from PHP. So you can use a now variable that holds the get date. So you see here how I'm using get date? That's sending back an array. Now to get the timestamp out of that array, we can use the first index within that array. So you say now, get date, and then the next line is timestamp is equal to now and the first index within that array. So then you can take timestamp and just send that variable, control C, instead of get date function. And it's not even a very crucial variable that you would want to send back, but since I was trying to send the get time function back, it gave us an array. I'm just going to show you how to break that array down to get the timestamp out of it. And there's other information that's in that array. So just press Control S, save this FTP back up to your server. Okay, now let's go to our live application online and refresh the page. Arbitrary data, we want return time. That's in your HTML file. Now FTP that up. Now go to your live web server and refresh your page and then you can see the timestamp it's going to keep increasing each time the request happens every 10 seconds alright so that shows you how to get a very dynamic kind of box thing and remember in the HTML where you uh, have requesting dot 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 that's where you can put in the image tag for a dot gif animated fan loader or just like some animated graphic that you want to have that tells the user that 
new data is being loaded into this box and you can even center it in the box to where there'll be a fan loader here every 10 seconds when that data is being requested instead of mine just saying requesting dot 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 you see what I'm saying so when, now when visitors come to your site every 10 seconds they're going to see four random information or items whatever kind of things you want to pull out of your database they'll see four or however many items you want to put in that box you can put 10 items in that box if you want but they'll see all new items come pouring in and this is JSON driven data format